Good morning and welcome to day one of our 21 Days of Prayer. My name is Tim and this is... Kyle! She's making me do the intro. Yeah. So welcome to the 21 Days of Prayer. Uh, hopefully you picked up one of the journals. We've got a 30 Days of Prayer journal that you can walk through and we're going to be doing this personally for the first 21 days. But if you did not pick up one last Sunday, make sure you get one at service today. Um, so that you can walk through and have uh, the, the verses and the fill in the blanks and some places where you can write and journal on. Um, there's there's some good opportunity to, yeah. to grow and grapple with what God is sharing with you. Um, not just through us, but, but what he's sharing with you through scripture. Now we're, we're opening this up as part of what we hope you do is a first 15. So that, that you might take the first 15 minutes of your day, break it down into five minutes of scripture, mm -hmm. five minutes of prayer, and five minutes of worship. Uh, that this is a, a great way to launch your morning. And, and if you're already doing 15 minutes, maybe spread out to 30 minutes. But 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 please be intentional and purposeful in investing in your relationship with, with God and his word, at least for the first 21 days. And, and hopefully you'll build up a pattern that, that will continue on and, and move forward with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd say even walking through these uh, 21 days of just um, pay attention and even focus on what Jesus is uh maybe asking you to give up or what he's inviting you to take up to as you walk through it. Cause each day it's gonna look a little bit different, but there's something for everyone. I feel like I learned something new every single time that we go through 21 days of prayer. Definitely. Yeah. And then I also encourage you to, like I will encourage you to share this stuff on, on social media, but but really have conversations with people that, that you're not the only one that's going through this 21 days of prayer. And and what God's saying to you, somebody else might need to hear mm -hmm. that, that your takeaways might be meant for somebody else. So I would encourage you that on Sunday mornings or uh, in, in in your family household and your ministry teams, where, wherever it is that you're interacting with, with other believers, definitely share what you're what you're hearing, but but also with non-believers, share what yeah. you're hearing and and how you're being impacted with with God's word. That that might just have an opportunity to to open up another conversation as well. Yep, absolutely. And I think before I even jumping into some scripture too, there we're using a variety of translations. Mm -hmm. uh, neither is better than the other. They just simply define or describe what's happening in different ways. There's um, not one better than the other. I am a fan of the NLT and NIV. I think you'll hear from like the message and ESV. And then on some of the days, depending on how long the mess or the scriptures are, we will either read from one or more translations too, just because some of the verses are quite long that we're planning on walking through. Um, is that cool? Yep. Work Story cool. Yes. So we're going to start off in Mark, Mark 1, 1 through 15. Uh, Kyle's going to read that from... Is that the NLT, the New Living Translation? This is NLT, that's right. Excellent. All right, so we have Mark 1, 1 through 15. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will, re he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness, and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. Gross. And then John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals, and angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Very cool verses. Yeah, absolutely. You don't like locusts? Uh, no. Have no, you ever no. eaten a locust? I have not. I mean, wild honey might be okay, but <laughs> locusts, no. For I mean, it's just, it's gross. My takeaways from verses tend to be the food items that they highlight because it just sounds fascinating. <laughs> 
So, so we're so we're gonna we're gonna look at some some key questions that you'll hear throughout the next 21 days of prayer. So, uh, this this question is a little bit different. So, what is your unfiltered response to the saying of Jesus that the time promised by God has come at last? He announced the kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Yeah, I think uh, right off the rip, like my unfiltered response um, is just looking at how Jesus says the time promised by God has come at last. And uh, it's easy for me to get focused on the like rep repent of your sins and believe. But there's these promises that God has been making. And he's saying, like, it's it. This is happening right now. That's my Here. unfiltered response. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not too far from that. That the time is fulfilled that when I hear the word fulfilled, it's like so it's not it's 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 complete, but it's fulfillment. It's it's uh that it's in this place that guy's like, this is what I wanted. It yeah. is here. This is a, this is a beautiful thing. And, and I just gotta, re I have to respond, repent, repent and believe that, yeah. uh, that those are things that I'm called to do. Well, that sounds super simple. It sounds, it, it sounds super simple. Yes. And, and yet still, still, as we see through scripture, very challenging, Right. Absolutely. very challenging. Um, so the next question that, that we're looking at here is that what questions emerge as you listen to Jesus in this text? And it's like, so like what kind of stands out and what are you, what are you grappling with? Ooh. It's a great question. Cause I think, cause it's a, it's a little bit of a, like what Jesus is saying, right? We're looking mm -hmm. at context of the story, but it, I guess it's a, Really just honing back in on the, like listening to the kingdom of God is near and repent of your sins and believe the good news. And there's, I guess my question would just be like, okay, how? Yeah. That's just the how, how to. Yep. So, so the question that's, that sticks out to me is, is it comes from a little bit earlier in the verse where uh, the voice came from heaven. You are my beloved yeah. son with, with you. I am well pleased. It's like, so I want to more, know more about that. Yeah. So, so what's the, so what's the background that the, the basis for that, that, I, I get a, I get a little bit of it here in the beginning of Mark, but if this is the first section of scripture that you've ever read, um, that is a fascinating mm -hmm. verse that that would make me want to to see. So what else is in these other chapters? Yeah. What are what are in these other books? Um, it's uh, like a little taste of of what's Ooh. to come. Ooh. And then this last question that we're looking at is like, My when favorite. you hear the word repent, what do you think of and and uh, feel? I got it. On the corner, repent, <laughs> repent, oh, repent yeah. of your sins and believe in Jesus. Um, that's what comes to mind for the first thing of what I think and feel. Um, and I think repent is a scary word to hear too for a it lot is. of people because that corner, like screamer, yeller mm -hmm. might come to mind for a lot of people. Um, that is what comes to mind for me too. But I think really in understanding the last handful of years is understanding that it, repent, um, it's kind of just like turning away from what was happening or what's keeping me from this relationship or this ability to walk with Jesus, yeah. uh, how I perceive uh, what, what it means to repent or something that's kind of like sin, missing that mark. And I, I know at a base level, when I hear the word repent, the, the, the first kind of feelings that come are guilt and shame. Yeah. And neither of those do I want to deal with. I would, like, I would like not to have to, to, to grapple with, with any of those, but, but as you get further down the walk and, and, and know Jesus better, know his word better, you realize that, oh, repentance is actually just like yeah. a form of worship, that it's, that it's a, a healing thing. It's a, a refreshing thing. It's, it's, uh, that's what it's meant to be. Right. But I know that when I hear it, I still have this, yes. this guttural uh, response of, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. No, I would, I would rather not, please. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Even just um, someone telling me, if I were to hear that right now, like, repent, it just, it's kind of scary feeling. Yeah. Um, I still don't like it. But... Yeah, the people on the street holding the signs, yes. that, that feels just like a hardcore judgment yes. thing, right? Yeah. So what, so what are you thinking when, when you hear those verses? That, that as, and as you go through the, the, the rest of the 21 days, that the next 20 days, as you're asking these questions, that, so when you're looking at scripture, what, what stands out? What stands out in, in, in the verses? What is it um, that is standing out that Jesus is saying? And, and then, and then, ultimately, how you're supposed to repot, respond to it? Then, in these verses, I can see. Well, I am supposed to repent and believe mm -hmm. that that I've got to, I've got to grapple with what that looks like in my life. But in in all scripture, as you're working through it, uh, try to try to find how it is that you're supposed to be obedient to it. We call it an "I will" statement. How mm -hmm. how will you respond to what's being presented to you? I uh, will repent. I will <laughs> repent. <laughs> When? When? Uh, <laughs> later. Maybe the next time I drive and hit the corner. 
So, so that's how we're gonna wrap up day one. Know that you got 20 more days. Some of them might be kind of as uh, heavy material like sure. this, and, and some maybe not as much. Some uh, some areas that you've probably, you might think that you've got down pretty good, and others just like, oh, so here's a sore spot, yeah. and here's where, where Jesus really wants me to be, that, that we encourage you over these over these next 20 days to um, take this seriously mm -hmm. and 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 follow some of the practices that you'll see on in your workbook there that um, here it'd be repentance and confession there's silence and solitude yeah. and there's some other activities that that you can do that can strengthen your relationship with God which is which is really our desire for you absolutely on that note thank you for joining us on day one stay tuned tomorrow for day two yeah